Hi, Jen. I know you were having some trouble with completing the square yesterday, and we didn't have time to finish, so I just wanted to go over a couple more examples before your test tomorrow. So for this problem, for completing the square, you want to make sure that you get your constant on the other side of the equation. So we'll rewrite it. x squared minus 14x equals negative 24. The next part, to complete the square, you have to take half of b, which would be negative 7, and square it, which equals 49. This means we have to add 49 to both sides. So I'm going to rewrite my equation. x squared minus 14x plus 49 equals negative 24 plus 49. This ends up equaling 25 on this side. And over here, we can factor this equation out to be x minus 7 and x minus 7. To solve for x, this is really x minus 7 squared equals 25. To get rid of the square, we can square root both sides. So then that leaves us with x minus 7 on this side, and the square root of 25 is 5, plus or minus 5. To finish solving the equation, you'd have to do x minus 7 equals negative 5, and x minus 7 equals positive 5. When you solve for x, you'd find that x equals 2 and x equals 12. Okay, let's try another example. So again, we want to try to get our constant on the other side. So we're going to rewrite it. x squared minus 30x plus whatever we're adding to it in the end equals negative 25 minus 56. So this side would end up equaling negative 81. You take half of your b, which is the 30. So half of 30 is 15, so we have negative 15. We have to remember to square it. So 15 squared equals 225, so that means we have to add 225 to both sides of our equations. So we have to add it to this side, and we have to add it to this side. We have x squared minus 30x. Oh. Plus 225 equals negative 81 plus 225. Let's see. I wrote that wrong. So that would give us 144. Okay, so now we need to factor this out. So x, x. Factors of 225 we know are 15 and 15, which can also get us to 30. So I'm going to put 15 and 15. And I'm going to make them both negative. Since these are both the same, I could rewrite it as x minus 15 squared, because there's two of them, equals 144. To get rid of this square, all I need to do is square root both sides of the equation, and that would leave me with x minus 15 equals the square root of 144 is 12. And you have to put the plus or minus, because then you would solve it by doing x minus 15 is equal to negative 12, and x minus 15 is equal to positive 12. When you solve for x, you would find out that x equals 3 and x equals 27. For the next example, I want to try to do decimals because I know that that's what you said you struggled with the most. Okay, here's an example that, we, that I'm going to tell you it's not going to work out perfectly like the other ones. We are going to end up with decimals or fractions in the end. So looking at this, the first thing I see is I have to get my constant to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to do minus 6, minus 6. Rewrite my equation. So x squared minus 10x plus whatever the square ends up being equals negative 13. To complete the square, I have to take half of b, which would be negative 5, and square it. 
So negative 5 squared is 25, so that means I have to add 25 to both sides of the equation. So let's rewrite it again. We have x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals, and if we do negative 13 plus 25, we get 12. I can factor this side out. Since we need to get to negative 10, I'm going to do minus 5, minus 5 equals 12. There's two of the same, so we would do x minus 5 squared equals 12. To get rid of that square, you take the square root of both sides, which would just leave you with x minus 5 equals. Now, you can't get an exact square root of 12, so plug it into your calculator. And when you plug it in, you'll get a long decimal, and you'll either round to the nearest tenth or hundredths, however your teacher wants you to round. I'm going to round to the nearest tenth. So when I round to the nearest tenth, I'm going to make it plus or minus 3.5. So now what I need to do is x minus 5 equals 3.5, and x minus 5 equals negative 3.5. When I solve it out, I would find x to equal... 1.5 and x to equal 8.5. Okay, let's try one more example. Again, this is not going to end up being a perfect square root, so we're going to end up with a decimal. So the first thing I notice is I have to get my constant over to the other side of the equation, so I'm going to rewrite it. Let's do minus 50 minus 50. So my new equation would be x squared plus 18x plus whatever we end up adding to it. 9 minus 50, which would be negative 41. To complete the square, we have to take half of b, which is 18, divided by 2, gives us 9, and square it. So 9 squared is 81, so we have to add 81 to both sides. So we can rewrite our equation. I'm going to just erase that so I have more space. x squared plus 18x plus 81 equals, and then negative 4 plus 81, I'm sorry, negative 41, which it gives you 40. So I'm going to factor out this side, 81 and 18, so if I do 9 and 9, make them both positive, equals 40. Since there are two of them, you rewrite it, x plus 9 squared equals 40. We can get rid of this square by square rooting both sides. So this would give us x plus 9 equals whatever the square root of 40 is, so plug it into your calculator. And again, we get a long decimal, so I'm going to round it to the nearest tenth. So round it to the nearest tenth, it would be plus or minus 6.3. So to solve for x, we have to do x plus 9 equals 6.3, and x plus 9 equals negative 6.3. When you solve out that equation, you find that x equals negative 15.3 and x equals negative 2.7. Alright, I hope this video helped you a little bit and you do well on your test tomorrow.